it is today. We don't have to fret about our shoes heel anymore. We don't have to put plastic bag on our shoes, on our feet anymore when there is rain. We'll tell you, actually, we'll show you what's inspiring that testimonial in about 12 minutes. Hello, I'm Aroya Eubanks, and this is, of course, Jamaica Magazine. In the next half hour, we're also revisiting a program that improves the lives of children with disabilities. There's lots more to see and learn, so do yourself a favor and don't switch the channel. See you after the break. Householders, business people, school administrators, be on the alert. Help control the mosquito population. Destroy breeding sites. Empty old tires and all other containers where water can settle. Bore holes in old cans. Cover water drums and garbage cans. Wash flower pots and vases and clean pet dishes regularly. Protect yourself from mosquito bites. Cover your body as much as possible and use mosquito repellent containing DEET. Thanks for sticking around. Jamaica Magazine is heading to the office of the Prime Minister in just a little while. But first, the news of the day. Good day, I'm Tamar McHale and this is your GIS News for Monday, July 6. Jamaica's Blue and John Crow Mountains National Park has finally been added to UNESCO's prestigious World Heritage List after years of advocacy by the Culture Ministry. World Heritage status is given to natural and cultural sites that are considered to be of outstanding universal value. The designation opens up new realms for Jamaica in tourism, research and the promotion of local-based initiatives. UNESCO's World Heritage Committee announced the inscription of the Blue and John Crow Mountains National Park on July 3 during its 39th session now taking place in Bonn, Germany. It's the first World Heritage Site for Jamaica and is one of only 32 mixed sites globally as it is identified as both a cultural and natural heritage site. In her statement to the World Heritage Committee, Culture Minister Lisa Hanna expressed gratitude for their recognition of the site's extraordinary natural and cultural values. She assured the committee that the Jamaican government was committed to providing the additional financial resources and management needed to maintain the site. Jamaica has been one of the 21 states serving on the committee since 2013 and is represented by the acting principal director of culture and creative industries in the culture ministry, Dr. Janice Lindsay, and director for the Natural History Museum, Tracy Comock. We will remain resolute as members of the World Heritage Committee to uphold the tenets of the convention and to serve the interests of small island developing states in world heritage. Government is moving to strengthen the capacity of the Office of the National Rapporteur for Trafficking in Persons. Information Minister Senator Sandria Faulkner says Cabinet has approved the Public Order Committee's recommendation to equip the office with additional tools so it can function more effectively. The office has been challenged by a lack of staff to conduct investigations. The office is to submit as a matter of urgency a proposal outlining the short and medium term needs to enable it to properly function. Senator Faulkner was addressing the recent Jamaica House media briefing. Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips says Jamaica has benefited from close to $3 billion U.S. billion in concessionary financing and balance of payments relief under the Petro-Caribe Energy Corporation Agreement since its establishment in 2005. This figure represents the largest source of concessionary financing that has been available to the government and people of Jamaica over this period. Dr. Phillips was speaking at a recent commemorative reception to mark the 10th anniversary of the signing of the Petro Caribe Agreement. The finance minister said the funds had helped to stabilize the country's foreign exchange market and balance of payment accounts. He said the agreement had also safeguarded the country's energy security and facilitated funds for unlending to social projects. The Petro Caribe Agreement was established by the Venezuelan government in response to increasing international oil prices. Industry Investment and Commerce Minister Anthony Hilton says the recently passed Copyright Amendment Act should be used as an incentive to those interested in joining Jamaica's creative sector. He says the amendments to the act are tremendous for Jamaica's intellectual capital. 
among other things, the Act has extended the term of protection for intellectual property from 50 to 95 years. Other countries have done parts of it. Jamaica has gone the entire way and extended to 95 years, which really gives creatives an incentive and says to them that if you spend your life creating works, you will enjoy some of it yourself, but you'll also lay up a foundation for your family. Minister Hilton was speaking at a GIS think tank on Thursday. The Copyright Amendment Act was passed by both Houses of Parliament in June. And finally, proceeds from this year's staging of the Denby Agricultural Show will be used to renovate the show ground, making it an all-year income-generating facility. President of the Jamaica Agricultural Society, Senator Norman Grant, made the disclosure at a recent GIS think tank. We are projecting to generate revenues in the region of $75 million with estimated costs of some $65 million. So we're looking for a surplus of about $10 million, which will be reinvested in the development of the showground. The JAS is getting approximately $42 million in sponsorship to support Denby 2015. Over 120,000 people are expected to attend the show, which will run from July 31 to August 2. Gates will open daily at 8 a.m. and admission is $800 for adults and $300 for children. It will be held under the theme, Grow What You Eat, Eat What You Grow, Making Agriculture Sustainable. And that's it for today's GIS News. I'm Tamara McHale. Thank you for watching. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller was in Barbados last week, leading Jamaica's delegation to the 36th regular meeting of the heads of government of the Caribbean community. Jamaica House Weekly explores that and other developments next. Prime Minister attends the 36th regular meeting of CARICOM heads of government in Barbados, setting the record straight. We are not aware that any such monitoring is taking place. Information Minister confirms corrected report from U.S. State Department and Free Zones lauded for their contribution to Jamaica's development. You're watching Jamaica House Weekly. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller last week attended the 36th regular meeting of CARICOM Heads of Government in Barbados. Speaking from the meeting, Mrs. Simpson-Miller welcomed the positive developments in U.S.-Cuba relations, especially the decision to reopen permanent diplomatic missions in both countries by July 20. She said it was a significant milestone towards the normalization of bilateral relations. During the meeting, the Prime Minister represented Jamaica's interests as CARICOM leaders discussed matters relating to economic growth and development in member countries. Mrs. Simpson-Miller participated in a plenary session on business matters and joined her fellow leaders in high-level discussions with the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. In the end, the Prime Minister proposed that the final communique from the CARICOM meeting reaffirm the region's interest in deepening economic cooperation with Canada. Jamaica also said CARICOM should welcome a WTO decision for a new waiver for the trading goods under the Carib Can Trade Arrangement. Carib Can is a preferential arrangement guaranteeing duty-free access to Canada for a wide range of products, excluding apparel, footwear and other items. At last week's Jamaica House Media Briefing, Information Minister Senator Sandria Fortner insisted that the government was not monitoring private online communications without proper legal authority. We are not aware that any such monitoring is taking place. As a matter of fact, I don't even know that we have the capacity to do any such kind of monitoring. Within 24 hours, the U.S. State Department backed up Senator Faulkner's position, issuing a notice correcting its 2014 country report on Jamaica's human rights practices. The State Department published the updated report on its website. It indicates that there were no credible reports that the Jamaican government was monitoring private online communications without appropriate legal authority. The 2014 country report on Jamaica's human rights practices also noted that the Jamaican government did not restrict or disrupt access to the internet or censor online content. 
The Information Minister also updated the country on matters arising from recent cabinet discussions. Cabinet approved contracts valuing over $241 million to carry out road repairs in sugar-dependent areas across three parishes, Money Musk in Clarendon, Bernard Lodge in St. Catherine, and Appleton in St. Elizabeth. The three contracts were issued through the National Cane Roads Rehabilitation Project, which is being implemented under Phase 2 of the EU-funded Sugar Transformation Program. Senator Faulkner outlined the scope of work. Clearance, earthworks, rehabilitation of existing road pavement and surface treatment and routine maintenance. A total of 5.5 km of road in Monimusk, 4.8 km in Bernard Lodge and 15.86 km at Appleton will be rehabilitated under the current contract. The work is expected to be completed by October. Minister Faulkner also indicated that Cabinet approved a recommendation from the Public Order Committee to equip the Office of the National Rapporteur for trafficking in persons with additional tools. This will help the office to effectively carry out its duties. The Office of the National Rapporteur will investigate reports of human trafficking, analyze human trafficking trends in Jamaica, and provide an annual report to the government. The Prime Minister has lauded the contribution of free zones to Jamaica's economic development. Her comments came at the 30th anniversary ceremony of the Montego Bay Free Zone in a message delivered by Justice Minister Senator Mark Golding. The men and women of the Montego Bay Free Zone, through your stellar work, have contributed to the reputation of the zone as one of the most sought-after locations for business process outsourcing in Jamaica and the world. You are the people and firms that have contributed to the earning of some U.S. $120 million last year and some U.S. $1 billion over the last 10 years. In her message, the Prime Minister also reiterated that the government would continue to improve the business process outsourcing sector through a strategic five-year plan. Enhancing the labor pool available to the outsourcing industry with special reference to the Heart Trust NTA and firm expansion plans with the Factories Corporation of Jamaica overseeing the development of 750,000 square feet of space at the Naga Head Technology Park. And that's it for this week's edition of Jamaica House Weekly. Join us next week for the latest from the Office of the Prime Minister. Keep watching the magazine. The full story about this we don't have to put plastic bags on our shoes, on our feet anymore. It's fast approaching. It keeps our bodies working. Our food nutritious, our living and working spaces clean and our lives comfortable. Water, the most precious resource necessary for the sustenance of life on our planet. Don't waste it. Let's conserve on this critical commodity. In the house, invest in storage containers and buckets. Take quick showers instead of long baths and invest in water-efficient shower heads, toilets and faucets. You may also want to consider one-pot meals and cooking methods that don't require much water. You could also wash fruits and vegetables in a bowl and reuse the water on your plants or grass. When cleaning dishes, fill both sinks and use one for washing and the other for rinsing. The leftover water can be used to wash off the concrete or asphalt in your yard. If you must wash your car at home, aim for once a fortnight and use a bucket to do the washing instead of running the hose. Don't delay. Start your water conservation practices today. Roads, bridges, sidewalks, homes for needy families, Jamaicans right across the island are enjoying these and more, and they're being delivered by the Jamaica Emergency Employment Program. More on the latest stops by the Jeep, next.
The Jamaica Emergency Employment Program, JEEP, is one of government's vehicles for countering chronic unemployment among Jamaicans, particularly those in lower socioeconomic groups. People with special needs, those with low skill levels, and those from underserved communities have been benefiting. The Jeep is rolling and rolling well. And Jeep have a driver. In its journey across the island, Jeep has been making welcoming stops in various communities, where it has set out to mobilize infrastructure development and create jobs. Jeep have done so much project across Jamaica that we all must be proud of. For the three years, Jeep were able to do over 1,000 road projects. When you put in a road into a community, people want to move back into a community. Where you didn't, where, where you didn't have houses, you are having houses now. Rehabilitative work on community roads, bridges and sidewalks, as well as other public structures, are noticeable features of Jeep. As part of making those happen, 50 million US dollars was allocated under the Jeep component of the major infrastructure development program, the MIDP. 20,000 people were targeted for employment and small contractors and residents within the communities found jobs. At the end of the 2014-2015 fiscal year, over 200 projects across the island, which started in Jeep Phase 3, were completed at a cost of $693 million. These employed over 4,000 people. The fourth phase of the Jeep began in October 2014 and 278 projects are being implemented. A combined $1.63 billion has so far been spent in phases 3 and 4, including $140 million spent on small projects done through the parish councils. So far, the figure that we have for short-term employment is about 55000 and, and, and the number is growing. During the last fiscal year ending March 2015, over $250 million was also spent to build houses for needy families. This joint GOJ Food for the Poor Wooden Housing Units project was financed by the Petra Carib Fund. West Rural St. Andrew is one of the areas benefiting under the Jeep, with $105 million spent on repairing roads. Among them, the Boone Hall Road, rehabilitated at a cost of $14.45 million. The Airy Castle Roadway in Stony Hill is on the list of roads in St. Andrew being repaired in a similar fashion. Sections of the Golden Spring, Mount Airy, Brandon Hill, Mount Zion and Coakley Roadways are also part of the program. The Jeep is also in Clarendon, where a number of community facilities have been benefiting from upgrading works. Among them, the Lionel Town Post Office, Kellett's Skills Training Center, and the Penance Community Center and Post Office. Overall, the three projects totaled $23 million. These are among 21 projects financed through the Petra Carib Fund to the tune of over $110 million. Over 1,500 1, persons have been employed on the project on the Petra Carib Special Community Facilities Project. Residents of Peckham in Clarendon are happy for the Jeep. Work on their multi-purpose community center is progressing. It got off the ground last year with an initial funding of about $4.5 million from the Tourism Enhancement Fund. The center will facilitate meetings, skills training, and a bamboo craft cottage industry, among other community projects. The rural residents are celebrating their rehabilitated roads, some of which are getting asphalt for the first time. Bashi Road in Belfield, Central Manchester, which was done at a cost of $3.56 million, and Woodlawn Crescent in Royal Flat are among those which were officially opened in February 2015. We look forward, hopefully, to many more road openings. Other thoroughfares, such as the Old Porus, Old Kendall and Long Hill Roads, are also getting attention under the Jeep. The Gravel Lane and Wishbish Roads in Northwest Clarendon were also improved to the tune of over $13 million. These represented a catalyst for further community development. One of the things that I'm very proud of today, when you travel on this stretch of road to even the bottom, the type of development was taking place you would never believe before. People are building and building more. As in many other areas where Jeep is in motion, schools and businesses, particularly farmers and produce vendors in Hazelwood, are satisfied with the ease and comfort in which they can now move about. Most of us could roll back the curtain of now and then and re remember how the world was and what it is today. 
We don't have to fret about our shoes heel anymore. We don't have to put plastic bags on our shoes, on our feet anymore when there is rain. The Jamaica Emergency Employment Program, JEEP, making a positive difference in the lives of Jamaicans, creating employment, transforming communities. better tomorrow there'll be a better tomorrow there'll be a better tomorrow there'll be a better tomorrow A team from the Japanese government had nothing but good things to say recently when they reviewed how their contribution to a disabilities technical cooperation project was being used. Going forward, uh, we uh, as a Minister of Finance uh, uh, very much uh, like to cooperate uh, in the next project. That is good news for our Labour Ministry and even better news for the many Jamaicans who benefit from its programs to help persons with disabilities, like the Early Stimulation Program. If you know a child with a disability, keep watching. How does it feel? Since 1975, the Early Stimulation Program has been providing assistance to thousands of children with developmental disabilities all across the island, transforming their lives from black and white into living glorious technicolor, providing therapeutic and educational services for children with special needs. To broaden that objective, in 2006, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security expanded the activities of the program to include a Stimulation Plus STEM Plus Early Childhood Development Center. We see children with cerebral palsy. We see children with chromosomal disorders such as Down syndrome. We see children with intellectual impairment, learning disabilities. We see children with autism and a number of various condition. After its initial assessment, the center implements feasible programs for those children aged three to six years to help them overcome their challenges. We have what we call a parent orientation that we sit with you and we explain what is happening and what might be happening with your child and look at a program how we are going to go about um, assisting this child developmentally. The case is discussed with the home intervention supervisor and other team members. Counseling sessions and workshops are also organized for the parents and guardians who have a difficulty accepting and dealing with their child's disability. In addition, STEM Plus has daily therapeutic treatment for the children. We have over 112 children. We have eight classes and the children are not necessarily in classes according to their age, but based on their capabilities are a mental age, they are placed into classes. Just take a look at some of the activities for these children diagnosed with cerebral palsy. They vary from using a swing to teach balance so that the children will be able to sit and walk properly to enjoying a ride on the peanut ball. So she is on the ball and we move her back and forth to strengthen her upper body and get head control. Up Alicia, up. Oh, bring your head up, Alicia. Head up. Very good. Very good, Alicia. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? It's rough. It's rough. Others enjoy tactile stimulation techniques, which uses rough and soft material to stimulate and differentiate between the senses. So we want to encourage Gabby to do hand-eye coordination stuff, so she'll be able to see the object and pick it up. So go, Gabby. We're also doing it in a sitting position to encourage Gabby to sit down, right? Pretty girl. Take up the block and put your hand on it. Woo! We got one! Nice girl! Ah! There are also activities to help these children with special needs to develop their literacy and numeracy skills. Five little ducks went swimming one day over the hill and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 and only four little ducks came back. Parents who enroll
told their children at Stimplus, which is operated by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, have seen first-hand improvements in their children with special needs. Melissa's daughter is diagnosed with autism, but things are looking up. Lots of changes. First things first, I credit them with having my child walk and run and even swing on a swing song by herself. Things that I didn't know that she could do on um, her own, that she wasn't doing at home. Chantoy, say ABC for mommy. She was slow with the letters. No, she knew all her letters. She knew colors. She's able to speak um, her mind freely. Um, vast improvement. When the children reach the age of six and have made, you know, the progress, we do have a graduation for them that parents look forward to seeing these children who were so delayed, you know, now going off. Off to other special education programs or the formal school system, some getting a chance to even do their GSAT, complete high school and university. And these are some of the things that inspire us to go on to help the children. There are children who come here and they're not talking and they leave talking, you know, things like that that inspire us and encourage us to go on. So if you have a child or know of a child with a special needs... Just have faith and work with the child, just as um, Stimplus would work with them, right? And help them. Don't leave the teacher alone to work with them. Don't rough them. Don't, don't try to, you know, make them feel like them is nobody. My advice to them is, if you do have a child with disability, Stimulation Plus is the place for them to be. For more information, contact the Early Stimulation Program, 95 Hanover Street, Kingston, or the Ministry of Labor and Social Security in your parish. Jamaica's beauty is our duty. Prevent bushfires during the windy dry season. Remove firewood, dried grass or bush away from your house. Never use fires to clear land. Never light a fire in an open area when it's windy. Ensure cigarette butts, matches or other lighting materials are out before disposal. And use an ashtray. Don't throw cigarette butts out of your window. High winds and dry conditions can be a fiery combination. Lend a hand. Protect our land from fires. And that's our show. Keep the lines of communication open. We're on Twitter and Facebook. If you feel like it, send an email to jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm. Our website is still a reliable source of information on government policies and projects, as well as other facts to improve your life. Visit our page. The address is on the screen. I'm Aroya Eubanks. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.